is from John Green. Huh. As I write this, I am shaking intensely. I feel the cry from my own body. I can't go on like this. Something else, something has to die. I heard the call and said yes, not knowing how or what I am affirming. I feel the death knell and fear annihilation, really fear that I'll kill myself in this agony. As a hunter, I know death. Nothing of the old works to distract or lie this emptiness. I bring attention to my hips, my thighs, hips, pelvis, belly, and feel the clutch, clench and heaving. There comes a faint hint of light, so tiny, disappearing when I look straight forward that way. I can't go to the love as I have in the past. It doesn't alleviate. I have to stay with this sensation, feel the grip, and stop trying to make it go away. From somewhere in myself is a knowing. This is the way. Stay engaged. Satri, when I am overtaken by resistance, doubt, diminishment, all the etc., and fear, self-destruction, is there more that I can do? You have said it will be brutal. I don't want the brutal with my tender self. Well, I think you've uh, I, I have John right here now, so pick up the mic, John. And I'll, I'll just, as beautifully written, thank you. And I can feel the poignancy of what, you are de and what you're dealing with. So, yeah, let's, let's stay with that. <laughs> if I were standing on the edge, I would jump to I don't know where. And there's a terror of destroying myself. You know, it's, um, this is a past life. You've done this before. I have. Yes. I've said yes to being killed. Yes. yes. You, and or we, yeah, we let others kill ourselves or we kill ourselves over time. But the, the nature of that impulse that's so poignant in you is where you, you took an early escape an early exit. Yeah. And then that, that then, when you come into a new body, that becomes your like back door. Yeah, it becomes the way you don't have to be with what you can't be with or you imagine you can't be with. And, and usually we can't be with ourselves with remorse and guilt and shame. It's not so much the outer world, it's what we do to ourselves or which we allow ourselves to be overtaken by. So you've had two parts of your nature. You've had the upper part, the upper chakras, which is strive to be a good man, to do good in the world and to serve. But the other part is the running away from this part that wants to die and could kill itself and is untrustworthy and you can't, uh, you know, it just doesn't want to be here in this, uh, to meet these diminishing and collapsed and crushed and defeated aspects of yourself. So now you're ending it. You're dissolving the suicide compulsion. And it feels just like this. It Ju feels just like this. It is a gut-wrenching, absolutely uh, almost out of control, diminished condition. And it's a consciousness that has been abandoned, that you've kept abandoned in you. Couldn't face it? Not only couldn't face it, um, it, it by itself, it can't live. The only reason you've lived pretty successfully so long is because your being has been dominant in this life. My being is... Your being, the being, your true self has been the dominant organizer of this life. And that has given you a life that you've had now. So now you're in the paradigm of meeting that part of you that is not you now. It's an abandoned part that you've abandoned. You gave me a piece to work on a week ago or so about that stuckness yeah. and it's been helpful I'm, I've worked out with it a lot that's exactly what to do and, and I can't seek it to let go I can't, you can't make look it. for a result I don't get a result 
I you just have to get a be with it. You just be with it. It's like a traumatized child that can't trust anything. You end up being the one that's always there, showing up, showing up for it, showing up for it, showing up for it. And then bit by bit, over time, it'll get that you're there. Once it gets you're there, there's a reason to live. So I can go with you there. I, I can travel with you as you right now go there. Okay, so go to that place in your body right now. Just sit back. Sit back. Be more relaxed than you are right now. Yeah, I can put the microphone on your thigh or put it down. Okay, and go into that part. And then describe to me, where is this overwhelming compulsion, anguish, despair located in your body? It's a big area. Yeah. But it's especially Lower. my belly and my legs and my buttocks. Yeah, so it's in the pelvis area and, pelvis. and in the transition. My, my genitals, I don't, I don't need yeah. Is it beyond? Is it more to the first? Is it in the first chakra? The very base? Yeah. Okay, all that's where it would live. Should I live? Should I exist? Should I not exist? First chakra. It's an existential terror uh, that sometimes this is, comes from being stuck in a body when it dies. Stuck in the body. Stuck in a body as it dies. Yeah. It's a psychic trauma where you uh, die, uh, you know, life is cut away suddenly, and maybe you drowned or something like that, and your, your being is still in the body while it dies around you. And it leaves an impression uh, that becomes uh, this. <clears throat> and uh, therefore, it's mostly a, a, a traumatized part of you that in a transition, in another life, you were stuck in the body while it was dying. <clears throat> and it leaves this dread and fear uh, uh, about death. And therefore, it, you know, when it, of course, once it comes out of that, it's fine. But while it's in it, it's stuck in time, stuck in time. Mm. So when you now feel into this area, your presence, especially because of your relationship with me, is letting that traumatized, abandoned piece of you know you're there. And you don't have to do anything, but in the process, you separate yourself from that consciousness because that's what's happened. You got caught up, you got overtaken by that consciousness. And then from this place, you can be the presence for it to be. What it is saying, what its cry and anguish is saying, uh, is really a vibration. an energetic event where the consciousness is tangled up in a knot of its own creation, well, in part. It's tenacious. It feels tenacious. I mean, I, when you did that, yeah. I got it. feel that. Okay, yeah. good. Good. So all you want to do is see part of you, he is your ultimate patient. Eat. He is your patient. You are here to heal this patient. You are the one it's turning to. You're the only one it can speak to. This is like your ordained duty, like my son dying, killing himself, is the, was my ordained duty, but I, didn't, of course, didn't have any any of that consciousness that would be in the way. So you, you're the one that meets this abandoned part of yourself, one of your many, many parts. But this one is a tough one because it absolutely believed that the only thing it could do was off itself, kill itself. It, it was a stuck structure. <laughs> one thing I know and I've experienced with suicide is the regret that happens on the other side of suicide. After two or three suicides, you just, 
no. Yeah. Yeah, whatever it is, I'm going to stay here for it. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you're there. That's it. You know it enough. You don't need to go. Just feel it. You feel it as it, but not allow it to keep overtaking you. Yeah. Okay, and you, you've got an ally, you know. I'm your ally. Outline. I'm your ally. Ally. I ally. join you in your intent to heal yourself, doctor. <laughs> yeah. And it's here with you, this piece. It's right now I can feel. Uh, you know, it, it, it may not have been your death. It may have been someone close to you that you were psychically linked to. Ah. And you unwittingly took on the inclination. Hmm. That could also be there. Have you worked with somebody who committed suicide? No one closed. Okay. All right, then it's yours. But that's also what we tend to do. And it's one of the ways we heal ourselves by being with people who we do, we do intervention work where we try to prevent people from, from killing themselves. There's a pull to heal that part of ourselves. So, <clears throat> crisis intervention. These are all parts of what it is to be human. It's not unusual. Most people don't get to meet this. And the fact that you've lived so long and yet it was so passionately intense in you, inclines to me that it's either you had a large charge to it or there is being or a being that has a charge that's keeping it alive. But it doesn't make any difference. You heal it in your own body. I, I feel the back door aspect. Uh -huh. um, the back of your spine? Like it's too much and or it's so close to too much that another... Graham. So it seems. Would be. Yeah, like that would be. It. Okay, good. Be there. That's a very interesting transition. I call it the crack in the universe. C call it the. The crack in the universe. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if it's in your lower spine. That would be great news. <laughs> it's just like that. It's absolutely your worst nightmare. Absolutely, the one thing, down to the very fundamental terror structures of your reptilian nervous system. I mean, it's too soon for me to say congratulations, but if you want to know the nature of the crack in the universe, that sounds a lot like it. Mm -hmm. Huh? Could that be possible? To, uh, Could that be possible? To, that to be the, that where you are in your worst, absolute, devastated moment is when you're standing right there next to the sock. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I've been there. All right. Uh, then, then quite, you know. Quite a bit this, this past week. <laughs> well, John, it's close. Well worth living for. Maybe you can even convince that entrenched part of you to just hang in there, just a little bit more. And then a little bit more then, and a little bit more on top of that. <laughs> Learning to hold the absolute unholdable, so it seems, is simply choosing to be present. Very good. Told you coming here would make a difference. <laughs> I, I told you coming here would make a difference yeah. as you were off killing living creatures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>